myself. My Welcome, everybody, to National Group of Jewish Women's 2020 Virtual Gala and Hanukkah Celebration. My name is Stephanie Rogers, Secretary of NCDW National Board and a member of the Gala Host Committee and a proud advocate of the Chicago North Shore section. I'm so excited to join you from Chicago this year to celebrate this joyous occasion. And I'm Robin Frank. I'm thrilled to be here with my very talented daughter, Stephanie. I am a colleague for life, an honorary national board member, a proud member of South Cook's section, and, a ga and on the gala host committee. So Steph, do you have a celebratory cocktail? Sure do, Mom. I'm drinking the whiskey Smash the Patriarchy. What about you? I've got the Ruth Bader Ginsburg berry. What are you all drinking tonight? And by the way, how do you feel being in a gala without heels? All of you that are in slippers tonight, raise your hand. <laughs> <laughs> and don't forget to, po to take a picture and post it on your social media. You can tag NCGW and use the hashtag dress up from the waist up. So tonight, we come together virtually with NCJW advocates and friends from all over the country to honor four superb NCJW advocates who dedicate their time and energy to changing the world. We also hear from two incredible NCJW, two incredible social action awardees. Time's up now, President Tina Chen and Senator Tammy Duckworth from our state of Illinois. While it was certainly been said, it's, been, it's worth repeating. 2020 has been a difficult year for everyone. Women, children, and families, groups we have worked together with for over years were devastated. In true NCJW fashion, the challenges of COVID-19 did little to deter our network of advocates from helping the most vulnerable. We mobilized, some of us from our home, some of us on the streets, but we did not stand idly by. This is precisely why we must take the time tonight to celebrate our amazing community. That's right, Mom. Across the country, from Sacramento to Cleveland to New Orleans to New York, NCJ volunteers sold thousands of masks for essential workers, created drive through food pantries and back-to-school stores, which helped more than 25,000 children and families, registered thousands to vote virtually, and sent over 56,000 letters encouraging people to vote. NCJW sections quickly pivoted their community service projects to aid those hit the hardest by the pandemic. In September, when feminist icon Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg died, the first Jewish woman on the Supreme Court and only the second woman to serve on the nation's highest court, we mourned together as a community. It amazed me to see that NCGW sections in over 30 cities put together Circle the Courthouse events across the country to both mourn and celebrate the life of RBG. We then turned our grief into action and joined together to fight against the nomination of Amy Coney Barrett to the Supreme Court. We made close to 14,000 calls, wrote thousands of emails, and lobbied our senators dozens of times. In some, we reached over 2 million individuals in our efforts. And even though we lost the fight, we engaged more people in our work and in the understanding that hashtag courts matter. Justice Ginsburg famously shared that the dissenters hope is that they are not writing for today, but for tomorrow. Many of her dissents paved the way for future cases that we have won. In her honor, we hope our dissent made her proud and that this mobilized Mobilization opened the door for us to have a fair, independent, and qualified judges on the federal courts in the future. Hello, I'm Marge Weiser and a member of the Gala Committee this year and an NCJ advocate for over 28 years. Hanukkah offers us a perfect space to pause and celebrate our many accomplishments despite some deep losses. 
It's a time not only for family and delicious foods, but to remember those who fought impossible battles against people in power who misuse their authority to cause more harm than good. At Hanukkah, we are reminded to resist tyranny and oppression. There have been years of Greek rule that shipped away at Jewish identity, religion, and culture. Shabbat practices and other forms of worship were abolished. And then the Syrians rededicated the holy temple in honor of Zeus. The Maccabees led by the elderly Mathesiasis and his son Judea resisted the small ragtag team of warriors, successfully drove off the Syrian armies. When they returned to the temple, they relit the near Talmud, the eternal life. And here's the part we all know well. There was only enough oil available to last for one day. The miracle came and the small amount of oil lasted for eight days until more olive oil arrived and the light of the near Tamid shone brightly with the whole time. Every year on Hanukkah, we remember the miracle of the oil and bring light into the darkness with our can candles. We remember the Maccabees bravery, their resistance to tyranny and oppression and we especially as NCJW advocates dedicate ourselves to fighting it in all forms. So tonight we invite all of you at home to please raise your glasses, enjoy your latkes, and join me in welcoming NCJW's very own CEO, Sheila Katz, who will introduce our first social action award to Tina Shen. Hi everyone. It is so wonderful to be with you here virtually tonight, and I look forward to a time soon when we can be together in person. Thank you so much to Steph Rogers, Robin Frank, and Marge Weiser for co-chairing this NCJW virtual gala and Hanukkah celebration. We appreciate everything you have done to make this evening possible. We would also like to thank Barbara Kaplinski, Roseanne Schmidt, Sharon Lipton, Amy Strauss, and Robin Frank for serving on the award nomination committee and choosing such outstanding award recipients tonight. NCJW's Social Action Award is our most prestigious award given to those who have shown outstanding leadership as change makers in the fight for justice. Previous NCJW Social Action Awardees include Secretary of State Madeleine Albright, Time's Up Legal Defense Fund co-founder Roberta Kaplan, LGBTQ rights activist Edith Windsor, and Congressman John Lewis and Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. May their memories be for a blessing. And tonight, we add two additional feminist heroes to this esteemed group, Tina Chen and Senator Tammy Duckworth. I have the honor of introducing Tina Chen as one of our 2020 Social Action Awardees. Tina Chen has spent her career helping to remove barriers for women in the workplace. Following a robust legal career, she served as an assistant to President Barack Obama, executive director of the White House Council on Women and Girls, and chief of staff to First Lady Michelle Obama. In her time working at the White House, Tina spearheaded the first ever Summit on Working Families and helped form the White House Task Force to protect students from sexual assault. Currently, Tina serves as the president and CEO of Time's Up and Time's Up Foundation, helping to change culture, companies, and laws. Tina is working tirelessly to create a society free of gender-based discrimination in the workplace and beyond. Throughout all these positions, Tina's work has centered on the intersection of safety, respect, power, equity, and diversity. NCJW is forever grateful to Tina Chen for her tenacity and willingness to stand up for what is right. Like our community, she prioritizes protecting the vulnerable. As president and CEO of Time's Up, she has made it clear that workplaces must be a safe, fair, and dignified environment for all. She has helped all of us reframe something that had been societally accepted for decades and decades and decades and flipped it on its head. 
how many of us simply tolerated harassment as part of the job because we had no other options, because we wouldn't be believed, because we wouldn't be supported. Thanks to Tina, we don't have to do that anymore. Time's up for sexism. Time's up for sexual harassment. Time's up for gender inequity and time's up for discrimination. I am thrilled Tina is one of our 2020 Social Action Awardees for her trailblazing work advancing gender equity and justice. Our country is better and we are all safer because of you, Tina. It is now my distinct pleasure to introduce NCJW's 2020 Social Action Awardee, Tina Chen. I am deeply honored to win the Social Action Award from the National Council of Jewish Women. To follow in the footsteps of your previous awardees is overwhelming to me. Um, and I am really not sure that I have lived up to the example that they have set for all of us, but I am so, so grateful to receive this award from all of you. And it is especially meaningful for me to come from the National Council for Jewish Women because you have been such great partners to me when I was in the White House and now that I'm at Tams Up in all of the work that we both collectively work on to promote social justice and equality for women. And I especially want to applaud the work that you're doing on reproductive justice right now. We are at a critical, critical moment for reproductive freedom and reproductive justice in our country. And your leadership at this moment could not be more important. So thank you again for this award. And I accept it on behalf of all of us who've been part of Time's Up since the beginning. As you know, Time's Up was born out of the pain of the reporting on sexual harassment in Hollywood that occurred in October 2017. It would not have happened without the bravery and courage of survivors, not just in Hollywood, but across all industries, who took that moment to speak up using the hashtag MeToo that Tarana Burke had started so many years earlier to really give voice to survivors of sexual harassment who had suffered in silence for so long, even though it's been three decades since sexual harassment was outlawed by the US Supreme Court. And so we doubled down on the effort. We started the Times Up Legal Defense Fund, which we still support. Started even before there was a staffer at Times Up, started um, the, the fundraising campaign through GoFundMe that so many folks generously contributed to that allowed us to launch the Legal Defense Fund with resources to really defend survivors in all cases that come forward to them. And we've helped over 5,000 people who've come forward already in just the last three years. We continue to support the Time's Up Legal Defense Fund through Time's Up. We also work for survivor justice, like supporting survivors, such as the Weinstein survivors during the Weinstein trial, and informing the public about what it really means to be a survivor of sexual harassment and sexual assault, which we hope actually contributed to this change in culture that we're seeing, where survivors were believed in that trial. And even a Hollywood mogul, it was seen, can get convicted and can be sent to prison for decades. But we also know we don't just want to keep picking up the pieces after sexual harassment happens. We want to also work for a world where it doesn't happen at all. And that means building safe, fair, and equitable workplaces for everyone. And that is our broader mission at Time's Up, to continue that work for safe, fair, and dignified work. I'm so lucky that we started the Time's Up Impact Lab, um, which is doing groundbreaking research on these issues which have been neglected for so long. A new project we're launching in the face of the COVID-19 pandemic is Time's Up Measure Up, which will be a multi-year longitudinal study putting out the data of what's happening as we go through this economic recovery, what's happening to women and vulnerable workers across the board. Um, we're gonna show the data, we're gonna tell stories through oral histories around the voices of vulnerable workers who are often remain invisible. And we're gonna put out the information real time as it's happening about what policy changes are working and which ones aren't. So we can course correct and build back better because that's the real key here. The opportunity out of this crisis is to build back better, to really attack the infrastructure problems that have existed for so long that have kept women marginalized in the workplace. Right now, that also means addressing caregiving. 
there is a caregiving crisis going on in this country right now. Women's labor force participation with the last jobs report has now sunk to levels we have not seen since 1986. We are about to undo generations of progress of women's representation in the workforce. And a lot of the reason is women can no longer balance the pressures of caregiving at home for children, for spouses, for themselves, for the elderly, um, and work. And so we need to build a caregiving infrastructure in this country. We are doubling down with our partners in the caregiving space to do that in the coming year with the new administration. And we hope everyone will join us because this is something we need to do to build back better across our economy. Because it won't affect just individual families, it affects businesses' success, it affects the success of our economy, except it affects our ability to be globally competitive as a nation. So we have so much more work to do. And I am so looking forward to doing it side by side with the National Council for Jewish Women. That's what I will take this award as, as inspiration for us to continue this work in this very, very critical historical moment we are all living through. Thank you, thank you, thank you again. And I look forward to so much more we can do together. Thank you, Tina, for those kind words. And thanks to everyone who is joining us this evening. We may be spread apart geographically, but our hearts are united. We feel so fortunate that we can gather around tablets, computers, and screens of all types to celebrate virtually with you. Like mom said, tonight we have the honor of hearing from four leadership awardees who we've honored this past year for their incredible work as NCGW advocates. All four women have been working to change the world through their community service, education, and advocacy work. First up, the Enduring Advocate Award for Social Change that honors a veteran NCJW leader who has had continuous advance in social change in their community for over 10 years. This year we have two awardees, Myrna Wertheimer and Cheryl Pullman. Myrna has been an active NCJW leader since 1974. She became a founder of the Rachel Coalition, a community response to domestic violence in Jewish homes, and the NCGW Essex Teen Dating Abuse Awareness Project, sending trained volunteers into high schools. Myrna led sellout productions of the Vagina Monologues, a rally for One Billion Rising, and a production of Slut, the play that opened the door for every Newark teen to receive counseling on sexism and sexual violence. It is her extraordinary work that we honor tonight with the Enduring Advocate for Social Change Award. Myrna represents the essence of a NCJW woman. She is selfless, believes that volunteer work and advocacy work will make a difference. Around the late 80s, she got involved in a program that was called Behind Closed Doors which was a domestic violence program uh, that specifically dealt with domestic violence in Jewish homes. And Myrna became one of the founders of the Teen Dating Abuse Awareness Project, where uh, Myrna was training members of NCJW Essex who were then going into the classrooms in high schools and talking to students about domestic violence and teen dating abuse. I was a young mother with a one-year-old. I needed mental stimulation. And when I heard that NCJW was the thinking woman's organization, I dove right in. It was in my DNA to help others who couldn't help themselves. And I wanted to support women's rights, and I wanted to see equality for all. I may never know who any of the people are, but I know I am touching lives. And if I can do it, so can you. Tonight, we have the honor of presenting another Enduring Advocate for Social Change Award to a woman who, in addition to her vast accomplishments, exemplifies what it means to be a lifelong NCJW member. When Cheryl Pullman retired as a corporate attorney, 
She channeled her legal and advocacy skills into addressing local and global issues of inequality and injustice, focusing her efforts on behalf of women, children, and families. Serving as Vice President of Community Service, Chair of Strategic Planning, and as President of the Dallas Section, Cheryl proactively developed and implemented community-wide projects that address topics as diverse as the fair treatment of undocumented immigrants, voter protection, and gun arms prevention. It is our esteemed privilege to present Cheryl with this award tonight. When it comes to leadership, Cheryl Pullman is the whole package. She possesses and utilizes the full spectrum of leadership skills as a powerful advocate and spokeswoman for humane immigration policies, voting rights, gun violence prevention that are also NCJW's priorities. We chose to nominate Cheryl for this uh, amazing award because she is a remarkable woman. Cheryl inspires others not only by her words, but more importantly by her actions. I would say she also is a woman of great vision. She is one of the rare people who can see the forest and also tend to all the trees. I believe that that is part of our core Jewish values is to engage in social justice. I work very closely one-on-one -on -one with people. So for me, it's not just a matter of uh, a big issue. It's actually how the policies impact um, real families, uh, real women, real children. And I am uh, committed to making their lives better in any way that I can. It means a lot to know that your work over a long period of time is recognized and acknowledged. And I'm, I'm really very humbled by it because there's so many women doing this work at NCJW. Thank you, Cheryl. Hello, my name is Dana Gershon, and I'm proud to be the president of NCJW. It is wonderful to be with you, you here live this evening, and it is my pleasure to introduce the second recipient of NCJW Social Action Award, Senator Tammy Duckworth. Senator Duckworth carries more first than perhaps any other member of Congress. She is the first Thai American woman elected to the House or Senate. She is the first female double amputee in the Senate. She is the first senator to give birth in office and the first senator to breastfeed on the Senate floor. Senator Duckworth has fundamentally changed the U.S. Senate and what it means to serve one's country. Prior to her Senate career, she served as a helicopter pilot in the armed forces, later as Assistant Secretary of Public and Intergovernmental Affairs at the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs, she forged new paths focusing on homeless veterans and the unique needs of female vets. As a senator during the government shutdown in 2013, she returned a portion of her federal salary in sequestration solidarity with furloughed government workers. Added to all of this is her outstanding leadership on immigration and refugees, demanding the reunification of children with their families, as well as increased refugee admissions. A leader on health care, she introduced the HEAL Act to address health disparities among women and racial and ethnic minorities, the LGBTQ plus community, rural populations, and socioeconomically disadvantaged communities across the U.S. Senator Duckworth is also one of the biggest champions in Congress for reproductive health rights and justice, opposing anti-abortion judges and introducing the groundbreaking Each Woman Act in the Senate. At her core, Senator Duckworth understands equity and justice, and her lifelong work is reflective of these guiding values. NCJW has been proud to work with Senator Duckworth on these critical issues. She is a fearless leader and breaker of barriers who seeks to build a more just world for women, children, and families. As a granddaughter of a veteran who marched into Dachau on April 29, 1945, as part of the liberation at the end of World War II, I am particularly honored to present Senator Tammy Duckworth with our prestigious Social Action Award. Hello everyone, I hope you're doing as well as possible during these impossible times. 
First off, I just want to say how grateful I am to receive this award. As the daughter of an immigrant, as a mother who could only have had my two little girls through IVF, and as an Asian American in a year when race-based hate crimes have spiked, I am so grateful for the work that groups like NCJW do, advocating on behalf of the most vulnerable among us, and through that advocacy, getting our nation closer to that more perfect union our founders once dreamed of. I also want to thank you for being my partner, as I, along with Vice President Harris and Senator Hirono, not coincidentally, my two colleagues who are also women of color, as we have led the introduction of the Each Woman Act into the Senate for the first time, working to ensure that every woman in this country has equal access to her constitutionally protected rights, no matter the color of her skin, how much money she makes, or the zip code that she lives in. You all know what I do, that the Hyde Amendment disproportionately harms those who are already marginalized by our, by our healthcare system, especially Black, Brown, Indigenous, Latinx folks. Hyde is both a healthcare and a racial justice issue, and it is beyond time that we end Hyde to help ensure that every American can live with dignity and economic security. So all that being said, I hope you know how grateful I am for your partnership especially in these unprecedented times that we are living through. I'm so thankful for every last bit you're doing to make this strange new world a little better, a little fairer for everyone. You know, I've spent my entire life in, a male, in male-dominated fields, first in the Army and now in Congress. Back in the military, I was the first female commander of my particular Black Hawk unit. And in that role, I took on tasks that focus on the well-being of my crew, making sure they had everything they needed to be the very best that they could be. Keep in mind, this was in Illinois in the winter. So I'd make sure that on those sub-zero mornings, there was hot tea or hot cocoa out there on the flight line for the pre-flight inspections. But some of the rival platoon leaders started calling me the mommy platoon leader. And it was meant to be an insult. And at age 25, I bought into it, convinced that to do my job leaving my unit, I needed to be one of the guys. What I, I was wrong, because you see, what I should have said, what I should have said was, damn straight, I fight like a girl and I'm gonna beat you doing it. And what happened was I took the hot cocoa and the hot tea off the flight line and my crews performed worse because they were cold and miserable. And so in fact, had I just stuck to my instincts, we would have done much better. Now, from flying helicopters overseas to passing bills in the Senate, I've learned time and again the good that comes from bringing a different perspective to the conversation because no group can make fully formed decisions if there are more white guys named John at the table than there are women. And that's what's in the United States Senate today. That's one reason why I am endlessly grateful that groups like yours are having the conversations and doing the work to make it easier for more Janes and Jens to pull up a chair to the leadership table too. But the truth is it's 2020. This fight should not be so hard. It shouldn't still be too much to ask that our boardrooms actually look like the rest of the country, a country that happens to be 51% female. It's outrageous that even now, there are nearly as many Republican senators named John as there are female Republican senators. A trend found in broader strokes across my party too and in, in industries nationwide. Of course, we've made strides in recent years. But some representation isn't nearly the same as full representation, equal representation, or even adequate representation. And this lack of parity is central to the problems facing working women, especially working moms. One quick example. We know that women are far likelier to support family-friendly policies. So if we want to see more bills in Congress or bylaws in companies that actually look out for working moms, like paid parental leave, we need to fight even harder to get more women into leadership roles. Look, time after time, we've seen that elevating women only makes this nation stronger. I was made able to better lead my helicopter crews when I embraced the fact that I wasn't just one of the boys. And I've become a better legislator since I became a mom, passing bills to look out for working families in ways I never would have thought of had I not had my two little girls. And I'm sure the same is true for many of you in your jobs and your lives. So I just wanna end with this. America will never be fully American as long as we keep accepting a status quo that does not accept half of us. This country will never be at its best as long as 51% of its population has to keep ducking our head to avoid knocking against those glass ceilings. And this nation will never reach the heights it should as long as we keep siloing women's issues the way that we're used to. Because women's issues don't start and end with equal pay. Healthcare is women's issue 
as we see COVID-19 disproportionately affecting women of color. The federal courts are a women's issue, as the Trump administration keeps on filling the bench with men hostile to reproductive rights. The economy is a women's issue. Racial justice issue is a women's issue. National security is a women's issue. You name it, and it's a women's issue. So thank you again for this honor. Thank you for progress, for yourself, for other women, and for your country. And thank you for teaching everyone that it's okay to fight like a girl and to win. Please stay well, and I hope we can see each other in person soon. Take care. Of the more than 200 judges nominated by this president and confirmed by the Senate, almost all have backgrounds that are hostile to health care and to abortion. People who are vulnerable before are devastated. This is a crisis. Even as we mourn, it is on all of us to pursue justice in her stead. Whose court is this? Our court. Whose court? Our court. One more time for the people in the back. For so many women, children, and families, this has been a tumultuous and devastating year, both emotionally and physically. People are still dying. COVID-19 continues to disproportionately impact women and women of color. It is now more important than ever to continue NCJW's work of protecting vulnerable women, children, and families. Looking ahead to 2021, we will fight with every ounce of our being to pass comprehensive COVID relief, and we will continue to work to ensure that our federal courts are filled with judges who are fair, independent, and qualified. We are growing our Rabbis for Repro campaign and speaking out for reproductive freedom, and we will work tirelessly to protect Roe versus Wade. We will always protect and promote the vote, given that our vote is our voice, and I think we can all agree that it's the most powerful tool that we have. Your generosity is what allows us to do this work. Please, if you will, and if you are able, head now to ncjw.org donate or click the link in the chat to make a gift to ensure that our work continues. Thank you. Thank you, Dana. Our next leadership award is named in honor of a beloved NCJW staff member and faithful advocate for social justice, Alyssa Froman. May her memory be for a blessing. This award recognizes the values that Alyssa embraced and lived every day. A deep commitment to Judaism and, her, and a tradition to tikkun olam, repairing the world a passion for supporting new advocates, a dedication to social justice issues, and a love for NCJW. We are very pleased to have with us tonight Alyssa's mom, Gloria, and sister Becca. The Alyssa Froman Inspiring Leadership Award honors an emerging NCJW leader who has had a passion, who has had a positive impact on the lives of women, children, and families in their community. Mandy Fairman joined NCJW after begging then SBA Michelle Ehrenberg to give her policy work to do. Maddie is now NCJW New Orleans State Policy Advocate, a clinic es escort for New Orleans Abortion Fund, a child life volunteer at Oshner Pediatric Hospital. Maddie is pursuing a master's degree in child life, and she lives in Uptown New Orleans with her sweet little dog and her wonderful wife a nice Jewish doctor who is also named Patty, Maddie. And now we are proud to present Maddie with the Alyssa Froman Inspiring Leadership Award. Alyssa did a lot in, in her short time um, to, to be a mentor. Both of us are the granddaughters of four Holocaust survivors. That legacy of persecution and injustice 
really inspired her to want to fight um, bad in the world and make this world a better and safer place for all. It was so important for Alyssa to inspire the next generation of leaders. And although we lost her, the values, the meaningful work that nourished her life goes on. And there's a need for them. To the recipient, congratulations, Mazel Tov. Um, it is such an honor to be recognized for the good work that you are doing. Me and my family, we thank you for everything that you're doing. And we thank you for bringing Alyssa along with you for honoring her memory and her legacy. To know Maddie is to know that she has a gentle demeanor, but she's really a force. And she's a force for truth and kindness. She gives of herself with no signs of stress or weariness, and she's unrelenting in her strength and conviction. Receiving this award feels like a, a pat on the back, like I'm going in the right direction. It makes me feel validated in my work, and it feels like I'm being told, good job, keep going. I'm really honored to, to follow in Alyssa's footsteps. Our final award for the evening is the Visionary Leadership Award that honors an individual NCJW advocate who has been instrumental in moving her section towards accomplishing NCJW's mission in a visionary and inspirational way. Eileen Jakobowicz has been a member of the Sacramento section since 2016. As an organizational development consultant for the public and nonprofit section, Eileen has left her professional expertise to bring the section to new heights in leadership development, governance, and sustainability. Last year, Eileen des designed and led a successful leadership development program through which the section gained an infusion of new board members, new energy, and new ideas. She spearheaded an amazing online fundraising campaign and has been instrumental in improving board functioning through her meeting design and facilitating skills. Eileen, give me a call. I have a few people and a few ideas that you can help. We are thrilled to present to you the Visionary Leadership Award. We decided to nominate Eileen because she embodied everything that a visionary leader is competence, practicality, vision, initiative, and, and very importantly, Eileen is fun. It has um, been my pleasure to work with you, my honor to call you a friend and sister, and I hope uh, that we will be together in many uh, efforts into the future to make this world a better place. There's so much opportunity in this world and there's so much need. And I feel like I have been blessed with so much and I wanna give back to help make a difference in our communities and in the world. To get stuff done, we have to create connections and we have to meet people where they are. It's important that we directly connect with women, that we find what they're passionate about. As president, right now, my, what I feel is my job is to create the environment for, for women to do what they pa feel passionate about, provide them the support, and then just get out of the way. You know, the women who nominated me, I have so much respect and admiration for, and the fact that they, they considered me for this award and um, advocated for me, just I'm moved and touched and humbled and honored. It's, it's really special.
rabbi for repro. I'm a rabbi for repro. I'm a rabbi for repro. Because no one should have to be pregnant who hasn't chosen to be. Because there aren't enough seats in a doctor's office to give one up to the U.S. government. It's really no question. Every person deserves respect, control, and decision-making power about what happens to our bodies. Our incredible Rabbis for Repro is not, despite its name, only composed of rabbis. I am thrilled to present for the very first time our fabulous Cantors for Repro Choir. Thanks to Hazan, Joanna Dulkin, who took the lead on this. We will now recite the Hanukkah blessings, have an exciting treat, a rarely heard choral rendition of Ma'atzur, and the classic O Hanukkah. <laughs>
mit Geschindert, mit Kindern, die Halle gelegt, Telefon. So jede Basunde, Basilienne, Wunder und Tanz im Frühling im Korn. So jede Basunde, Basilienne, Wunder und Tanz im Frühling im Korn. We have so much to celebrate and still a great deal of work ahead. Many of you who are here tonight are at NCGW's most committed financial supporters and partners. For those of you newer to our advocacy, please join me in honoring these women for their continued generosity and dedication. Go to ncjw.org slash donate to make your Hanukkah gift this year. What an inspiring evening. Thank you so much for joining our celebration. We welcome you to join our interactive after parties where we can continue the conversation. You can get there by clicking the leave button on the screen or clicking back in your browser to return to the celebration agenda page. Once you're there, select from the two after party options and click the join button next to the party of your choosing. Congratulations to all the leaders of, and awardees, and may the lights of Hanukkah, may the lights of the Hanukkah menorah bring warmth and hope for a better year ahead. We're looking forward to continuing our important work in 2021. Happy Hanukkah from our family and everyone at National Council of Jewish Women. Look, I am. Look, I am.